So today I'm talking about how to get 100% Lighthouse performance score. And really, this conference is all about a larger ecosystem, optimization ecosystem. There's been great talks covering things like analytics, conversion rate optimization, content, everything except from page speed and performance and the importance of that within this large ecosystem. You see, optimization to me doesn't work in a, with dealing with certain tactics in isolation. You always need to address absolutely everything. So, page speed and performance are important if you are working in the optimization um, area. It has a significant effect on search engine rankings and conversion. According to Think with Google, one second delay in load times can lead up to 20% abandonment rate or um, conversion um, reduction. As page load goes from one second to five seconds, the chances of a bounce increase by 106%. Page speed is, in fact, important. Not only to conversion, but also to your search rankings. Search rankings, this graph is from a Search Metrics' recent study, where you can see a very clear correlation, a very clear downward trend between the websites that perform well and their positions in, on the first page and the second page of Google. It also, page speed and performance also has a significant effect on your landing page quality experience, on your quality score, and ultimately even cost per click. This is not a conference covering paid area of, um, paid area of, of search and digital. But if you do work with uh, departments or colleagues who run paid campaigns in, for example, Google Ads, I guarantee you performance and page speed will make a difference to what they're spending. For example, if your department is spending 100,000 euros a month on, paid, on, on Google Ads, moving quality score through optimization of page speed and performance from four to seven will save them over half of that budget. Now, suddenly, Everybody's listening about why the, the, the importance cannot be underestimated. So I would like to introduce Lighthouse. Most of you already probably know, have heard Lighthouse is an open source system tool from Google that allows you to optimize pages, allows you to examine and see what's wrong with a given page. And it has audits for performance, accessibility, best practice, progressive web apps, you name it. And it evolves all the time. It's a live system. And it works very simply. You give it a URL. Suddenly, I guess, but you're probably recognizing this interface. You give it a URL. It performs a variation of different checks and comes back with a report. And that report straight away offers you opportunities, opportunities for optimization, and most importantly, tells you approximate savings you can achieve by dealing with each area of those, of those weaknesses. So, with all of this information available to you at fingertips, why do big brands, every day I see big brands score low, why do they? ASOS, you guys have heard of ASOS? Yeah, ASOS, uh, their performance on their homepage is 28 out of 100. The page takes over 12 seconds to interactive. For a large brand, I question why, why is it? And really the answer is very simple. It's just not easy. And the criteria is changing way too fast. About 18 months ago, I performed um, I did a talk at Brighton SEO, which is a large search conference in the UK. I was on the main stage talking about user metrics and how they affect rankings. I was so proud to show, look at this website. It's our own website. I've optimized it to be 100%. That same website today barely scratches 42%. And we did so much to it. I've, I've spent months and months optimizing it. I've taken a screenshot of the performance checklist that our development team does on every project that comes out of the door. And there's a lot, there's a lot of optimization they do, and that only gets you to 42. Now, so really, it is hard. And, and what, what does it actually even take? Is it even possible? So, to find out exactly how difficult it is to get that perfect performance, we ran a hackathon. 
We run a hackathon with our development team, with our R&D team, and our search team. We challenged ourselves to get as close to that perfect score as possible by changing nothing visually on the website. So the website had to look the same, it had to have exactly the same content, function the same, and even run on the same platform. Content management, that is a platform. So old versus new. And before I begin, before I dive into the detail of what we actually did, I would like to show you some of the improvements we ended up making. So there's clearly, there's a lot of positive change. And these were the areas that we have identified through Lighthouse and our own experiment that needed improvement. So first was migration to HTTP2. I mean, you guys are, are very, very digitally savvy crowd. HTTP2, you know, it's a hypertext transfer protocol. So it's how a browser communicates with a server. A browser sends an HTTP request, server responds, and that's how they talk. The difference between HTTP 1 and 2, i.e. the old and the new protocol, is with the old version, a browser could only send maximum, a maximum of six requests within one connection. So if your web page uh, requires 120 resources using HTTP 1, you will have to wait until 20 connections have completed. Right, so that takes a long time. There's a lot of wasted time there on just establishing connections itself. Then if you're on HTTPS, which is, you know, the new, the new norm, you, for every connection, you need to establish a handshake, an encryption, so to speak. So it was almost like if I was to deliver this talk to six of you at a time and shake your hands, it would take me an awfully long, long, lot longer than, than just present here on this stage for you. So HTTP2 is the new protocol developed by Google, standardized thing back in 2015, supported by all modern, modern browsers. HTTP2 allows a browser to establish just one connection and sends all of the requests within that one stream. Next area for improvement is, of course, images. Everybody talks about images. The techniques that I'm going to cover are a little bit beyond your typical resizing of images, make them smaller, shrink, and, 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 and that's, that's no longer enough. That's what I did 18 months ago. So the first recommendation from Lighthouse was defer off-screen images. So right there at the top it says defer off-screen images, and you can save almost three seconds of your page load speed. So of course I jump on it first. Typically, you guys probably already know, responsive websites deal with images in, in a way that on a desktop, on a wide screen, you will see absolutely all of the images, the richest experience, and then you downgrade or, upgrade, or go on the other way. So the same page, for example, on a tablet or as a mobile device, you can see some of the images that I'm showing on the desktop, I am not showing knowingly, not showing on a smaller device, it's not needed, but I am still loading them. Now, why am I still loading them when I know that user is on a device that they will never see those images? I'm loading them because I only have one set of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it's just one set of files that works for all. That's your typical approach. So serving images in the next generation format is also very important. The new WebP format, is much crisper, much better quality than your JPEGs, your PNGs, but the file size is fractionately smaller. So we have an approach of serving it on demand, on the fly. So we serve WebP if your browser supports WebP. If it doesn't, we fall back to the original version of the image. Therefore, we're delivering the best experience based on your browser. Probably very difficult to see on this screen. So um, yes, so WebP, much crisper, looks better than PNG. Uh, JPEG looks very pixelated and has got those typical attributes of um, a PNG image. Another recommendation from Lighthouse was properly sized images. And the way our R&D team have dealt with it, the solution and approach they have come back to me with as a result of the hackathon is this. Typical IMG tag, you guys recognize it's just one image, one very large image, then women then shrink using our styles. 
uh, we have replaced completely with a thing called SRC set. And all it is is just an array of the same image in, in all kinds of different sizes. Yeah? We're very scientific about what sizes we're putting in, in, into our HTML. So we'd go into Google Analytics, check your most frequently, most popular um, devices, browser size, um, window sizes, and we would code images according to those sizes. So when my browser detects that that window that I need to fill with an image is 693 pixels wide, it's not going to take the largest image and just shrink it because it still needs to download it. It will only download the, 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 big, the smallest it can get away with if you have to deliver the experience that it wants. So yes, a lot more lines of code but ultimately we're saving megabytes, <laughs> not transferring two large images. So there is a difference in DOM, but you can automate that if you work with your developers. Lazy load, uh, you have heard of lazy load, buzzword, best thing ever. Uh, lazy load is images only load when they get into a viewport, right? So not only we're not loading images when we know that, that, that our user will never see them, we also do not load images that a user cannot yet see. Yeah? A viewport is to cover is what you see on, on the screen here. In this viewport, we've only got a lovely picture of Rory <laughs> and a button. And these are the only images that are, have been loaded by, by our browser. Beautiful. So critical. This is when it gets really clever. Critical is probably when I would say that a browser loads a page, it processes HTML, gets a list of all of the assets referenced from that file, then goes and downloads your scripts and JavaScript, evaluates it all, and only when that process is complete, then a browser starts loading a page, painting that page. So what we do on first load, we take only the necessary resources, that is JavaScript and CSS, only the necessary, nothing more than that is needed to paint that window and inline it into HTML, into your head tag. So the first thing a browser downloads is HTML. With that, with that HTML, it already gets everything it needs in order to paint that page. So the result is an under a second page load for a rich looking page. And then we don't stop there. Once the page is loaded, we continue loading the normal resources that would normally be needed and caching them for next visits. So on every, on the subsequent load, we check the browser does no, no longer needs these resources. It has it already cached. We skip in lining, so our DOM's clean again. So this approach is absolutely a dream. It allows me to load content instantly on first page load and every single page load after that under a second, it's unbelievable. Then we, oh, I've just got a screenshot here showing you that the second time we're taking everything from disk, from disk, from disk. And we use anonymous cookies to remember, to know if we need to inline resources or not. They're anonymous, so it really helps. Next approach, we call it, well, I call it only load what you need, it's logical. It doesn't even need a name. Load only what you need um, is not something you can quite easily fix. It's a completely different approach to structuring your web application. So we had to break, literally break into small pieces, all of our CSS files, all of our JavaScript files, by logical components on the page. So there are styles for a form, header, buttons, navigation, and and we lazy load them as well. So for example, um, the screenshot, I can't, I don't know whether you can see, I'm highlighting a button. So it is in our viewport, that button. And here you can see I'm loading buttons CSS. But not before. And I'm also not loading pagination or footer because you can't see those yet. So HTTP2 is something that I've started from. So if that's the only thing you do, I promise you, it will make no difference whatsoever on its own. Changing from HTTP 1 to 2 and making no other changes, no difference. But together with all of those things that I have just described, that's when it becomes magic. Modern JS is another thing you can do. Um, you probably would deal with most of your performance issues dealing with images and, um, and load only what you need approach. But modern JavaScript is 
just so much more efficient. It's 300% faster to evaluate, and it's 20% smaller file size. The screenshot here shows that on our old website, evaluation of JavaScript was the second most time-consuming process. Now, this is exactly the same looking website. Um, with the new version, it is at the very bottom, so it's very fast. Uh, what I could say is that optimization, we're all here on a journey. We're all here to learn of how to make experience better, whether you optimize conversion, page speed. But what I have learned throughout my journey working with the team from Hackathon to, to actually delivering that new version of the website is this. So now it's time for us to unite with our developers. I absolutely believe that without them, without them buying into what you're trying to achieve, you have no luck. Uh, there'll, there'll, there'll be very um, little chance of you achieving the success. Learn from them. Interest them in what it is that you're trying to get to. Sit next to them, talk to your boss, move your desk, do anything you can, uh, you can, anything with your power to interest them. Unless, of course, you are very technical, very gifted, and can tackle Lighthouse Trace yourself, which even to me looks a little bit scary sometimes. So um, second, is, this is very important, optimization is no longer a one-off task. It really is the new norm. You can't optimize an application and leave it there. This is what happened with the older website, to only discover that a few months later it was, it was nowhere near the same level. And I absolutely give you my word, what scores 100% today will not score 100% tomorrow. It is possible, it is clearly very difficult, and we got there after hours of blood, sweat and beers. Um, and what I have noticed is that after the relaunch, after the swap over of the old website versus new, exactly the same content, absolutely nothing changed. Our SERPs, sorry, our rankings, positions in search engines, in some cases have shifted by about two SERPs, two search, two search results pages. I mean, in other cases, it wasn't as drastic. Somewhere we've shifted just position five to three position. But overall, across our whole board of keywords, there's been a clear positive change. So that, to me, says you can no longer ignore performance. So I wanted to run through very quickly the improvements that we ended up making to get to that perfect score. So the number of requests sent by a page to in the first load have reduced from 36 to 17. The volume of data, this is where we've made the most savings. Beautiful. We have reduced by 870% from two and a half meg, which is already a little bit smaller than your typical page nowadays. We've reduced it to, to 0.3. Page load now finishes is in under half a second. Beautiful. Critical loads in under 0.3 seconds. That's what you should aim for today. If you start today, you will definitely be on the forefront. So I've talked about a lot of different optimization techniques. And obviously, this conference covered many, many other areas. But if you do want to learn more about anything that I've done throughout this experiment, go to this page, so deleteagency.com slash lighthouse, where you will find a full transcription of what I've said. I want to inspire you. I want you to walk away from this event and want to do something. Even if it's just one or two of those things, do it, and you will, you will be very delighted with the results. So thank you.